So it's time for our next scenario. In this scenario, we're going to go ahead and automate the new tab navigation. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and click on a link which will open a new tab. And then we simply have to verify that new tab has been opened. And as part of our session, we will verify the title of that new tab. Once we have verified the title, we will close the tab and then we'll be back onto our main tab. So that's what we're going to be covering in this flow. So let me head over to the website to show you what that will look like. So I'm over here on the website and as you can see, we have these multiple tabs at the top. So if I click on this World Test Championship, it's going to go ahead and open up this new tab as you can see right here. And within that, I just have to verify that the tab is opened and then the tab title is World Test Championship or basically it contains World Test Championship. That's what we're going to be covering. And once we have verified the title, we're going to close this tab and we'll be back to our main tab. So this will be our overall flow. The key learning in this obviously is to learn how we can work with tabs and also how to work with page management in Playwright. So let me show you a quick diagram of what that entire flow will look like. So essentially, we're going to start off with our Playwright script. Then from there, we're going to go to our site, which is the Cricket World Cup site, which will go to the home page. Our page will get loaded. Then we will click on the World Test Championship link, which will open up a new tab. Now this tab gets opened up using a pop-up event. So this happens anytime a new tab or new window gets opened up, this pop-up event gets triggered. So we're going to wait for this pop-up event as you can see right here. So the moment we click on this World Test Championship, we're waiting for that pop-up event. Once this resolves, that means a new tab or new page has been opened up. Then from there, we're going to wait for that page to fully load it. So this just says that, hey, we there's a new event that's been triggered, which is going to try to open up the new page or new tab. But we also have to wait for that page to be loaded. So we're going to use the wait for load state for that. And finally, we're going to verify the new tab um, or the page title of that tab. And after that, once the title is verified, we're going to close the new tab as well as close that page. So this is what our overall flow is going to look like. Hopefully, this will help you to go ahead and write your test accordingly. Now, this one is a little bit tricky if you haven't really worked with how Playwright works and how new page or context works in Playwright. That's why I've shown you this diagram so that it gives you a little bit more understanding of what you need to do. There's two main things you need to do is work with this pop-up event as well as wait for the page to be loaded using wait for load state. After that, pretty much everything else is going to remain the same. So go ahead and try this out on your own and then I will show you how this will look like as well. All right, so let's go ahead and try to automate the scenario. So I'm going to head back to VS Code. So right here, we're going to go ahead and create a new test as usual. So I'm just going to copy this entire test. And then simply edit over here. And we can just say, verify new tab and assert title. And we can get rid of all of this. So right here, we are going to the home page. Once we are on the home page, we have to go ahead and click on that link, right? Because that link will pretty much open up the new tab. So let's go ahead and find that link. So I'm going to go back to our Chrome. Now this is the link we need to click on. So I'm going to do right click and inspect. So you can see right here, it has an href and this is the World Test Championship and it has this text. So what I can do is I can use again page by role and the role will be anchor tag and within that the text would be World Test Championship. So that's what we're going to be covering as part of our locator selector. So let's go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to say page dot get by role. So we're going to be clicking on the link so I can select the link and within the link, the name of that link is going to be World Test Championship. So let me just paste that right here. There you go. Once we have done that, we need to go ahead and do a click on that. So this is my click. The thing with Playwright is anytime we're working with any kind of new tab or new window, I mentioned that we need to wait for an event and that is called the pop-up event. And you can find that out if you go to the Playwright documentation. So I'm going to head back to Playwright documentation. And right here, and you can simply do a search for this as well. If you just search new tab, you can see the moment we search for that, this shows up on pop-up that says it's emitted when the page opens a new tab or window. So this is this new event that gets fired whenever there's a new page or tab gets opened up. 
So we can just simply add page.waitforevent pop-up and wait for that to be resolved. So this is basically your browser triggering an event saying that, hey, something new has opened up some kind of pop-up, whether that's a tab or a window. So we start waiting for that pop-up before clicking. So you can see over here, before we click on something, we start waiting for that. And then we resolve that thing over here at the end. So let me go ahead and do that. So before we do the click, we need to go ahead and wait for that event, pop-up event. So this will check, hey, is there gonna be a new tab or new window gonna open up? This will keep waiting. And then the moment we do a click, it will trigger that event. So this thing will get triggered. So both of these are promises. And the key for this is we need to wait for both of these to be resolved. Obviously, we're gonna wait for the pop-up event to resolve because this is, as you can see, it's a promise right here. And then this itself is a promise as well. And you wanna make sure both of them gets resolved at the same time. So we can do that using promise.all. Now, this is something if you're not familiar with JavaScript, it might seem a little bit weird, but basically we, are, we have two asynchronous calls and we wanna make sure both of them get resolved at the same time. So here I can simply put both of this in together. I'm gonna cut that and add this thing right here. And this will be a comma and this won't be anything, that's it. So if you read over here, it says it creates a promise that is resolved with an array of results when all of the provided promises are resolved. So basically we're saying, hey, when both of these gets resolved, then I want you guys to go ahead and go to the next step. So we can store this into a new variable. So I can call this one my new page. Now the thing with this is I cannot just do new page because this new page returns two things or this promise returns two things. My first line returns a new page. The moment this pop-up gets resolved, that means a new page has opened up or a new window has opened up. My second doesn't really resolve with anything because it's a click, click doesn't return anything. So for this, I can just add in a square bracket and I'm basically saying I only need the new page. So if you see here, I'm getting the page context right over here. Now, again, if you haven't really worked with JavaScript, you don't understand how promises really work or how promise.all works, this might seem a little bit weird, but this is just a standard way of making sure multiple promises get resolved at the same time. And once they're resolved, we can store them into some kind of variable. Now, the reason we added a square is because if I don't do that, you're gonna see that this new page will have a page as well as a void because the first line returns a page, second line returns a void. So instead, when I do a square, I'm saying, no, I don't care about the second line, it just give me the first one. So here we get this page as being returned. Now this is my new page context. Now I can do the same thing with this one, what I was doing with this over there. So now in my test, I have two pages. I have regular page and I have the new page or basically the new tab. So what we're gonna do is wait for this new page to load. So here, let me just add in a comment just so you guys understand what we're doing. So here we click on the link and wait for the new tab to open actually wait for the new tab to get triggered. And then over here, we are waiting for that new tab to actually load. Wait for the new page to load. There you go. Now we can do that really easily by just doing new page dot. And you can see over here, I'm getting all of this exact same commands that we get with the regular page command. So now I can do wait for, in this case, I have different ways of waiting. Here, I'm gonna say wait for load state. So the wait for load state is essentially trying to wait for the page to be fully loaded. As you can see, it loads the current document. So once this is fully loaded, the DOM content gets loaded. That's when this gets resolved. So it's basically a way of saying that, hey, once all of the content gets loaded on that page, then go to the next step. The next step is pretty straightforward. We have to verify the title of the new page. So this would be my assertion. So I can just do await, expect, and then I will say new page. And then here I can do to have title. And the title of that is gonna be World Test Championship. So I can simply just copy that and put it over there. There you go. And then after this, I wanna go ahead and close my new page. So this is my assertion. And then I wanna close the new page because, or the close the new tab, right? So the reason being is we've just opened a new tab. If I wanna come back and work with my regular page, I have to simply close this and do whatever I need to do after this. So I can just do this, await new page dot close. There you go. So this will go ahead and close any new page or new tab or new window that's been opened up.
Perfect, so that's pretty much it for our test. Let's try to run this to make sure this works. So we're clicking on the new tab. As you can see, new tab has opened up. We are trying to verify the title. Now this might fail because I was trying to do, actually this did fail and let me bring it up over here. Yeah, so I'm saying, hey, just verify World Test Championship right here. But instead I have to add all of this whole thing. So here, once again, I can use regex to simply say already, already only give me this particular part. So let's go ahead and make that change. But at least good part is we are able to get this World Test Championship text being returned. That means it's picking up the title from the new tab. So that's a progress. So let's go back. And then here I can change this to regex. Now this will simply just verify this text is inside that title. So let's run this. All right, so it's gonna wait and there you go. This time my test successfully passed. As you can see right here, it's passing successfully. And it also goes ahead and closes the new tab right over here after it has done its assertion. So let's do a quick overview to see what we really covered over here. So the first step is obviously pretty simple. We go to the website. This piece is again, just to explain, anytime new tab or new window opens up, we fire an event. The event is called the pop-up event. So I'm just saying, hey, wait for that pop-up event. It's trying to wait for that pop-up event because it knows something will happen after this. That means some kind of page will get opened up, some window will get opened up. And we do the trigger by clicking on the link. So the link opens up a new tab, which basically resolves this promise. And then we also have to resolve this promise. So to resolve both of them together, we use promise.all. And then we assign essentially the wait for event returns a page. So we assign that page to a new page right over here. After that, we wait for that page to get fully loaded. So we use wait for load state over there. Then we do our basic assertion. Here we are using a regex to make sure we do text contains. And then finally, we close the new tab. So just to show you the diagram, so this will kind of make more sense now. If I head back over here, you can see I have my Playwright script, which opens up the World Cup site. From there, the page gets loaded automatically. Once the page is loaded, then I do a click on the World Test Championship which automatically triggers my open new tab or basically that pop-up event. And then right here at the bottom, we are waiting for that pop-up event. And once the new tab or new page gets opened up, this pop-up event gets resolved. Then I add in my manual check to say, hey, make sure that new tabs get fully loaded or the DOM content gets loaded. So here we do wait for load state for the DOM content to get loaded. Now these two are different. This one is simply making sure that something has opened up. It doesn't really mean that it has actually fully loaded. This one is making sure the page has fully loaded. Then we verify our new tab on new page title, which is my assertion right here. Once the assertion gets verified, then we simply go ahead and close that new tab on new page. So I know this was a bit complex guys, but hopefully you now understand how all of this works and how new tab and new page context works with Playwright. So that's all for this scenario guys. Let's head over to our next scenario to see what we're gonna cover over there.